But first, for hundreds of years, Maine's Wabanaki tribes, the Micmacs, Maliseets, Penobscots, and Passamaquoddies, have made baskets from ash and sweet grass. In the last 35 years, no one has done more to keep that tradition vibrant than Teresa Secord. In 2016, she was honored for her work by the National Endowment for the Arts. Although her family's roots run deep in the Penobscot community on Indian Island near Bangor, Teresa Secord grew up in South Portland. And when she was young, basket making was not an important part of her life. Uh, we would visit with my grandparents on the Penobscot Indian Reservation near Old Town regularly. And so we saw, I, I was able to see my great-grandmother weave baskets and ask questions, although questions were not encouraged. Today, <laughs> some of Teresa Secord's most cherished possessions are what were passed down to her. This is a barrel um, form that my um, great-grandmother used to weave this basket and a lot of her kind of trademark signature baskets. And it's really neat. It, um, it was made in the 1800s, and it's a four-piece puzzle mold. So after the basket is woven, the center comes out so you can get the wood, wood piece out. I weave all of my baskets using her same wooden forms and tools. How old were you when you first tried your hand at basket making? It, I wouldn't um, weave baskets until I was 30, so 30 years ago. By then, Teresa Secord had finished college and earned a graduate degree. She went to work for the Penobscot tribe in Maine as a geologist, and on the side started taking lessons in the Penobscot language from a woman who was also a skilled basket maker. As we became friends through that language class, I started taking basket lessons with her, and um, I worked with her for five years. Did you take to it just like that? I think so. I, I had always wanted to weave, and I, I really enjoyed um, watching my great-grandmother. And I had collected baskets even, you know, as a youth. And um, you know how when you're in college and moving around and even graduate school out to Wisconsin and back, um, those were some things that I took with me. When Secord began making baskets, the market for them was weak. Most consumers were content to buy inexpensive plastic baskets. What had been a decades-long decline began to turn around when Secord helped organize and then led the Maine Indian Basket Makers Alliance. It helped basket makers to do a better job of marketing their products and brought in a new generation. So over the course of 20 years, we were able to lower the average age of basket makers from 63 to around 40, and we increased the numbers. And so it was a gradual kind of turning around of that uh, ship. I think we all helped raise the art form up again together, and therefore the prices came with it. What's the story behind the basket in the corner? That one is a um, sewing basket, and this is something um, that my great-grandmother was also known for. I think um, that antique photo, she's, she's holding one identical. And this belonged to my mother, who's now passed. And so this would be, you know, a very special piece to me. What you've done has been recognized for two major contributions. Your own work, your own artistry, but also running the Maine Indian Basket Makers Alliance and creating this organization and creating mentors and really bringing not just one generation, but now two generations probably, back to the craft, which is the earliest art form that Maine has, basket making. You don't ever, in our tradition, work as an artist alone. You work in a community of artists. So just for an example, by the time I've woven a basket, um, you know, somebody has cut down the tree and pounded the ash log to release those splints, and, and then I've bought that material or traded for it. There are people who still pick the grass at the coast and sell it to us by the pound, the sweet grass that we weave in our baskets. And so it's really a community art form and a community responsibility. By the time I've finished a basket, there may be as many as three other people or four who've been involved. What are some of the top line baskets going for these days? Well, um, you know, a, a basket that takes two months to weave could command as much as twenty or $25,000 here. And so that, that's really great. Um, there's no way that we could encourage a new generation to weave baskets if we hadn't also worked on the marketing piece. Certainly the focus on marketing isn't something that we made up. Um, my great-grandmother and others were marketing their baskets to the tourists and uh, main tourists. They were very, I am mean, really proud of that. They were really plugged into the tourism economy, you know, as a cottage industry. Part of the reason that 
reviving the tradition was important to you is because this is so rooted in Maine. You can't really do traditional Wabanaki basket weaving in San Diego, can you? No, you really dependent upon the other community members. Um, there's a there's a Micmac friend of mine, Eldon Hanning, who provides you know the ash material to a lot of us, and I think he feels a real commitment, you know, to that to help make sure that the basket makers have the materials they need. And so, right, it's something that can't be done in isolation. A few years ago, you were awarded a National Heritage Fellowship mm -hmm. from the National Endowment for the Arts. It's a big deal. What did it mean to you to receive that? You know, a lot of people <laughs> work really hard in Maine, especially at craft and art and furniture making and things. And, um, you know, to be recognized for, for my own artistry as well as for the advocacy and helping to, you know, raise up this art form has been really a, a great honor to me. Um, it, it meant a lot, still does. On those occasions when you can sit down and quiet and actually do your own work, is it still fun, still rewarding for you? Yeah, yeah, it really is. I had been in the national art markets for about a decade, and the weaving had become more um, weaving for market and not as much weaving for me, my own aesthetic, and you know, my cultural connection. And so I'm really working hard to get that back and make it fun again. Teresa and I were talking about how far back the art of making baskets goes, and it goes back century upon century upon century. But is it the oldest art form ever in Maine? She said, well, maybe not. The making of birch bark canoes would be about the same vintage, which uh -huh. is a great point. Huh. And another elegant piece of work. Right. So are you going to learn how to do that next? Oh, boy. I am just, I am awestruck at the artistry. We did a segment a few weeks back, you and I, and we had a whole selection of baskets. And when Incredible. you see them and get a chance to touch them, they are just Oh, gorgeous. I just can't say enough about them. Yes, absolutely mind-blowing that anyone could do that. Yeah, magnificent yeah. work. 